OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network This is Make Assessments Thoroughly and Instantaneously with Google Forms. So, a little about me. My name is Natalie Panisha. I'm an ESL instructor with LAUSD. I teach uh, ESL beginning high. I teach a multi-level uh, four, five, six class and a an, uh, family success initiative course for parents, which is also multi-level. Um, but this tool can be used for any class, for any subject to engage with students. And for you, you can assess them thoroughly and instantaneously. So let's talk about why Google Forms and Google Sheets. Why is this? Why do we use this? Um, I'm a big fan of Google Forms. It's one of my favorite tools to use in my classroom. Um, Google Forms are super duper easy to make. You save them forever. They save automatically all of your changes. Um, and they're really easy to give access to students. Um, you know, some tools you have to, they have to create accounts for, or, you know, whatever system you're using of communication with your students, you can just slip that Google Form link in. Um, why else do we like Google Forms? They're very convenient and they're very streamlined. Um, so, yeah, I hope you're interested in Google Forms and how we can use them. Google Sheets, of course, um, automatically collects all of the data that we get from our Google Forms. So that's awesome, especially if, you know, collecting student data is important to you. Um, and as masterful teachers, it should be. So let's get into it. I would like you to complete a Google form, please. This is a pre-assessment of knowledge of Google Forms. So I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm going to grab this link. Please click the link in the chat and complete this Google form. So let's take a look at the responses. I've got 19, that's close enough. So as you can see, here is my Google form pre-assessment and my questions are on this tab. I click responses and I can see a pie chart for each multiple choice question. So we have 19 responses. I have a good understanding of Google forms. 21.1% of people say yes, very. 57.9% of people say somewhat. 21% oh, 20 of people, participants say no, not really. So what can we extrapolate from this, from, the, from this data? What can we determine from this data? If you would like to answer, you can unmute. What can we determine from this data? Or put your answer in the chat. We can Ooh. determine. We can determine that the majority of the class has um, somewhat um, understanding of Google Forms. Beautiful! I couldn't have said it better myself. We all need help. <laughs> Great. Yes, we can. We can determine that. The majority of participants have a somewhat good understanding of Google Forms. So not only is this informative for me, but you can present these responses to your students and ask students to engage with the data as well. So I see less familiarity with Google Sheets. I see most participants are somewhat comfortable with Google tools in general. Okay. Almost everyone has filled out a Google form before as a responder. Yes, after, uh, after uh, I guess it's not after, but you know, after two years of, of pandemic, I'm not surprised that we've all filled one out before. 
Have you created a Google form before? Okay, this is a higher statistic than I was expecting. 76% have created a Google form before. Have you given a Google form to your students as a pre-assessment? The majority of you say no. Have you given a Google form to your students as a survey? The majority of you say yes. Have you given a Google form to your students as a quiz? Okay, the majority is no. Have you given a Google form to students to collect student writing? That's a big no. And have you given a Google form to your students as a post assessment? The majority is no. Okay, great. So I'm very excited that you want to know more information on how to use Google forms for assessments in the classroom. And I hope you can see from this demonstration how useful it can be. Because even though we are a group of strangers, about you know 30 of us, I have a good understanding of where most of you are uh, for each of these different um, uh, questions. I know relatively the group's ability. So it can be very informative for us as instructors, or um, if you're not an instructor, for collecting this information. But also it can be a useful tool if you present these uh, responses to your students as well. So, awesome, let's keep going. Let's continue. I'm going to show you now my agenda for today. So part one is a demonstration. We uh, completed our pre-assessment of knowledge of Google Forms. And I'm going to show you uh, how I use Google Forms as pre-assessments and student reflections in my learning management system, which is Schoology. Part two is the hands-on portion of the training. So you will be following along with me and doing this on your computer at home, locate and create Google Forms. You will learn how to use the Google Forms quiz function. We will create questions and set up automatic grading in Google Forms. I think I forgot to mention that earlier as one of the reasons why I love Google Forms because it grades automatically and students see right away, immediately, the correct answer and the learning already begins in that moment. We will learn how to turn on and off submissions. We will learn how to limit submissions, limit the number of submissions that participants can make. We will look at editing mode versus preview mode. We will learn how to erase responses. We will learn how to share Google Forms. We will talk about how to assess student knowledge via that responses page. I know this is a lot of information, but if you want to use this tool in your class, I feel that each of these uh, is important to know and helpful. Um, but if you don't understand all of it, if you're not able to absorb all of this information, Google Forms is very intuitive. Just go for it. Just take what you can from this training, try it out in your classes, you'll pick up the rest of it. Oh, and lastly, of course, export a Google Sheet of the responses so you have a Google Sheet of the data of student responses. Okay, great. So let's get started with this. So first, ah, uh, yes, first we should make sure, ooh, hello, we should make sure that we're all on the same page about assessments. So what is a pre-assessment? What is a pre-assessment? Feel free to submit some responses in the chat for me about what are pre-assessments. Mm -hmm. Some speedy typers. Mm. I like that. Knowledge and experience before instruction, a way to find out what students already know. That's great. Yes. 
assessment before the quote unquote learning in your instruction has begun, the learner's current knowledge or starting point or where the students are. Great, thank you for your responses. So what is assessment of learning? This is also known as formative assessment or post assessment. Please share your responses in the chat of what is assessment of learning? Ooh, what they came away with. Mm, what they are leaving your class with. <laughs> That's cute. Mm, the bundle of brain power. <laughs> what students have absorbed from the instruction. Nice. The assessment of learning is what they've learned or what and what you might need to reteach. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of the end, right? This is the test or the final exam at the end of a unit or a module. There's also assessment of learning, a summative assessment. Feel free to share in the chat uh, a quick description of summative assessment or assessment. Oh, I think I put the wrong name, wrong word, assessment of learning. Hmm. I think that is the wrong preposition. Does anyone know what the correct preposition is? because assessment of learning was the previous one. So I have a typo and now I can't remember what it was. Assessment, it might be a subset of assessment of learning. Assessment from learning? Mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's from? You know, it might be correct, and I just didn't notice until this moment that it's the same. But, oh, looks okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So summative is pretty similar to formative. It is the assessment of learning at checkpoints during learning. And so for K-12, this is sort of a progress report card. And uh, yeah, just that sort of checkpoint midterms, yeah to measure progress, but usually sort of just a grade, a general grade. And the last assessment, assessment as learning. What do you think of this? What do you think that means, assessment as learning? Mm-hmm perhaps what they are learning at the moment. Mm. Assessment as a form of reflection. Interesting. Learning style. The act of thinking about responses to a question is part of learning, okay? Any other ideas for assessment as learning? As maybe refers to while. So assessment as learning is using, putting assessment into the student's hands. The students use peer and self-assessment to identify for themselves areas for improvement and progress. Um, so assessment as learning really allows students to take control of their learning journey, know exactly where they are and where they want to be. Um, so Google Forms, if we look at these sort of maybe scale of assessments, 
I recommend that you use Google Forms as pre-assessments with the idea that the it's kind of an assessment as learning because in my experience when i give students a pre-assessment and they're engaging with it they're trying to understand even before they've started even before i've started an instruction they're trying to understand what the answer is how to get the correct answer and they're already starting to be thinking about how to learn this content in the very first um, in their very first engagement with it. Um, so just some I thoughts on assessment for you. Um, you can also use Google Forms as post assessments, temperature checks along the way. It just depends on how you want to use them. Um, I'll get into this more a little bit later but I don't actually recommend Google Forms for your post assessments. Um, that's more like tests or um, something that you want to be graded in your LMS because Google Forms, unless you want to by hand add every grade, tally every grade and add it into your grade book, I don't recommend it for, for uh, um, I don't recommend it as your post assessment because I, those should be graded, right? Those should be graded so students have that post assessment as uh, reflected in their grade. Uh, I hope that makes sense. All right, so I wanted to show you um, some examples from my uh, from my class now. Right here we go. So this is my class website. Oh, nope, this is my sign in page. Thank goodness I'm a fast typer. <laughs> so this is my class from Tuesday. This is my ESL beginning high level two class. What you see is we are in the week six folder. This is from Tuesday. I always have a link to my presentations for students. And here is a pre-assessment, and here is a post-assessment, as well as homework assignments. So let's take a look at the pre-assessment here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let me open it in this new tab. Now I can click this. All right. So. If we look at responses, I have 49 responses. Do you think I have 49 students? <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be crazy. I have about 40 students in this class, and I think there were about 30 students on Tuesday. Um, so what happens is students take the pre-assessment. They're very excited. Actually, let's take a look and see what it is. It is on want or need. In the description, I explain want plus thing, want to plus action, need plus thing, need to plus action, instructions, and an example. The first question is, what is your full name? And then I have multiple choice questions. This is a pre-assessment at the beginning of the day. So. When students see their score, they automatically want to submit again. <laughs> so uh, many students, as you can see, um, this student here, Juan, he submitted six times. Edgar submitted three times, or Christian submitted three times. Yancy submitted three times. So I think it's it's, uh, a good indication that students are eager, you know, they're, they have real incentive, they want to get those that 100%. So they are trying and trying again right away <laughs> to, to make sure they can submit the this Google form with all of those correct responses. So what's cool is we can see all of the responses in a bar graph for a multiple choice question. And I can see maybe where students are confused. I can see um, 
how most students are doing very quickly, very easily. So here's an example of a pre-assessment in my class from Tuesday. I can share these slides and I will at the end of the presentation. All right, so I'm going to go back to my LMS. Um, I forgot to mention that my class is in person. So, um, but the students use this, use their LMS on their phones. So they, I tell them, click, go to Schoology, open the app, and they know where to navigate to because we do it every day. And they open the pre-assessment on their phone. So this is a post-assessment. Um, and this is, uh, I frame it as a student reflection. I don't actually use the word post-assessment in my class. I changed it for this presentation. Um, I always say student reflection. So what I've done is I used the same questions. You can do new questions if you want, but I feel like I, it's, I might as well use the same questions I used for the pre-assessment, but this time the students have to write the answer. I don't give them multiple choice. They have to write it. So they should be familiar with it. And so it's a little bit more difficult and hopefully, hopefully they remember and they've learned from the lesson. So here I have 33 responses. Um, well, I'll ask you what you think. What do you notice about the way this data is, um, is displayed? What do you think of this? responses well the problem with google forms it has to be absolute for the grading it does so that's where you are at with capital letters or adding an i or adding a two yes <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. period so it's wonderful that it's automatically graded but as we have seen from sort of anything that's a quiz where there's writing involved in order for it to be automatically graded it has to be completely perfect um so that is hard to do and then you know you get this you also see so many sort of uh you know answers on the x-axis it's just this doesn't really help me <laughs> you know as a teacher looking at this it's very messy. Um, so I like to sometimes collect student writing this way um, because I feel that the students benefit from it. You know, they do the multiple choice in the beginning. They do the fill in the blank on the, at the end. But it is um, not necessarily conducive to me as a teacher, I feel. Mr. Bakin. Barry. Yes. Um, so uh, if you could uh, go back to that one. Sure. Uh, okay. So um, what what's the reason, I mean, from your actual analysis of the original, like, for example, the last two columns, to me, visually look the same. Want uh -huh. to and want to, both not capitalized. Is that like yes. a spacing, extra spaces it's, involved? It's probably because one, they have a space in a different place. I see. Yeah, okay. because that is google is sensitive to that <laughs> every space um needs to be accounted for and then but like let's say you were looking at that result could you then what go to the original or i mean go to the spreadsheet as opposed to the the chart and in the yeah. spreadsheet could you determine what the difference is probably i'd have to pro i probably would have to copy and paste it to see um but you know it's negligible. It's a, it's they got it. They're right. <laughs> um, Thank you. But you could if you if you exported the Google Sheet, you probably could determine the difference between that. Um, all righty. So we can see that I think the students, for the most part, 
have improved, but it's it's really hard to see that at a glance when you collect writing on Google Forms. Um, it's much better to perhaps have a survey of, of student reflection um, or multiple choice. So let's continue. Now that you have an idea of how to use Google Forms in your class, um, yeah, let's continue. Hopefully you are incentivized to take this on with me and create some Google Forms together. Um, before we do that, actually, though, I do want to explain a little more about when to use assessments with Google Forms or in your LMS, because as you could see, the multiple choice, really effective. The writing, not so much. Great for the students, not really useful for us as teachers to, to reflect on. So Google Forms are great for pre-assessments, very, you know, short, uh, a short pre-assessment, maybe at the beginning of class to get students excited and engaged with what they're going to be learning in your class. They're already trying to make connections, already trying to figure out uh, how to get the correct answer. The wheels are already turning. It's great for anonymous temperature checks. Um, perhaps you noticed, but my first question was, what is your full name? If you do not ask what is your full name, then it's anonymous. There's no way to know what student answered, gave which responses. So, but that might be effective. It can be an anonymous temperature check um, or a temperature check for common mistakes that you expect students to make. It's great for student feedback or reflection. What did you think of class today? Did you learn? give an example. Uh, so nice, easy way for students to give you feedback about the class that you've taught. And I intend to use Google Forms more in this way. Short assessments, two to 10 questions, but I'm not a huge fan of using Google Forms as formative assessments, like I said. So because they are graded, it shows the correct answers, which is great for students to see the immediate feedback. But these grades don't go into your grade book because they're on Google. They're on the Google Forms website. Um, so that's why I think assessments should go in your LMS, your more formative assessments. Best for multiple choice and short answer questions, short, short answers, like the one or two words. So for your LMS, like I said, formative and summative assessments, graded tests, graded quizzes, and writing. Because in addition to um, the sort of chaotic display for uh, writing on Google Forms, um, you can't really give feedback for writing. On Google Forms. It's not really a tool that you can provide feedback with. Um, so you'll want to use your LMS for that to give students feedback on their writing. All right, now we're going to get to the hands on portion. What we're going to do is I will present the steps on this presentation, static presentation. Then I will open up a new tab in my internet browser and I will demonstrate the steps in real time. Then it's your turn. So while we are making this Google form, I know you're exploring, maybe some of you exploring for the first time, I want you to actually create something, use this time and create something that you will use in your class or on Monday, you know, during your workday, <laughs> if you're not a teacher. Um, so. Create a warm up, maybe questions that um, uh, questions about what you've taught this week on Monday, or a pre assessment for what they will be learning on Monday. Use this time to create a short, uh, a short Google form. 
I recommend maybe four or five questions, less or more, if, if you'd like. I can see using Google Forms for collecting their writing and then feedback in LMS Canvas. If you would like to, go for it. Whatever works. I think that's I think it's more convenient to have students complete writing activities, assessments in the LMS um, without using Google Forms, but whatever you prefer to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um You'll be you'll be needing to move between this zoom presentation and Google forms in your Internet browser, so I have uh, two methods for you to do this, you can move between open programs on your computer or you can split your screen half um, zoom half Google forms. So let's talk about how to move between open programs, this is a great trick that I love and I use all the time. If you want to move between open programs on a Mac, you hold command and press tab and it moves you between all of your open programs. If you're on Windows, you hold alt and press tab and move between your open windows, your open programs. Um, so what we can do if you'd like to try that is open Google just open Google, that's it. And try pressing Alt tab or Command tab to move between Zoom and Google. So I want to give you a few moments now to try that. Hold Command and press tab to move between Zoom and Google or hold Alt and press tab to move between Zoom and Google on Windows. Oh yeah, I didn't think about if you use Google Classroom as your LMS. I do not, so I'm unfamiliar with that. Thank you, Elizabeth. So please let me know, did you open Google Chrome? Were you able to move between your open programs with these hotkeys? Do you have Google ready to go? Any questions? Need any help? I guess silence is good. Silence. All right. Awesome. Okay. Great. Alrighty. Or, of course, yeah, it works. <laughs> Of course, you can always just split your screen. If you have windows, you know, you can drag the window all the way to one side of the screen and it will automatically fill. Um, and you can snap Zoom on one side and you can snap Google Forms on the other. Or if you're on a Mac, you can minimize your two windows by either pressing Command M or using the yellow minimize button. So whatever you prefer, please set yourself up. You can use Alt tab, Command tab, or split your screen. I hope everyone is ready to go. We'll get into Google Forms. All right. So first we need to locate Google Forms. You can go to google.com slash drive, or if you open Google Chrome and you're signed in, you can click Google Drive in your tools. So you can see that here. You click the nine dots to find all the Google tools and click drive. You just need to make sure that you are in the correct account. So as you can see, I have two versions. There are two versions of me. There's my personal Gmail and my LAUSD account. So when I'm doing work, I prefer to be logged into my LAUSD account. And I need to always make sure that this little icon is showing my work self, not my personal self, before I open Google Chrome. 
so now I'm going to demonstrate that in a new tab. I'm going to close all these tabs first, though. Oh, my gosh, so many tabs. So I'm opening a new tab. I'm in Google. Let me just check and make sure that I'm in my LAUSD account, not my personal one. Yep, that's the right one. And then I click the nine dots, our Google Apps. And I'm clicking Google Drive. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Google Drive. So you thought this was about Google Forms, but it's actually also about Google Drive because you need to make sure all of your Google Forms and all of your files are organized. So what I suggest that you do actually now is create a folder um, for our Google Form that we're going to create today. And you can name this, I don't know, Google Form Training. Let's do that, Google Form Training. So what I did is I clicked new and then I clicked folder and I created a folder. All right. So let's continue. Now that I've created a folder for my Google form, you're going to click that menu again that says new with the beautiful rainbow plus and click Google Forms. It's this purple one here. So here I am in Google Drive. I'm going to open the folder that I just created and it is empty. I'm going to click plus and here it is the purple icon, Google Forms. And I have successfully created a Google Form. How about you? Here is the picture with those instructions. Were you able to create a Google Form? Yes. Great. Yes. Does anyone need assistance with this? Okay. All right. Let's continue. So the very first thing that I recommend that you do before you create any questions is to make this a Google form quiz. Make this a quiz. So at the top, there's those three tabs, questions, responses, and settings. Choose the settings tab, and then you're going to toggle make this a quiz. Toggle that to turn it on. So now I'm going to demonstrate that in a new tab. Here was my new Google form. I'm clicking settings and I'm clicking make this a quiz. Make this a quiz. So go ahead and try that. Make your Google form a quiz. Natalie, did you get a chance yes. to answer the question in the chat? Did you move it right into the folder or you did that later? You have the option of either. For myself, I created that folder and I opened the folder. And while I was in there, I created uh, the Google form. So if, you're, if you have a folder open and you click new, then it will live in that folder that you are in when you click new. Uh, you can always move it later. And I can show you how to do that right now. Is here, next to the title of your form, is a little folder. And it says move to. And you can move it anywhere within your Google Drive. And you can create folders from this little icon. So it's very handy. You can't go wrong. All right, has everyone made their Google form a quiz? Yeah, it is. It's a great feature. It's very helpful. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions, need any help? Or can I continue? I 
I will be sharing this slide deck, absolutely. Is the blank quiz template any different than starting a form and changing it to a quiz? Um, the slow internet, I understand, I understand. Um, so Barry has the, uh, uh, a question is the blank quiz template any different than starting a form and changing it to a quiz you can create a form and then you can make it a quiz afterwards but i find that sometimes you um, forget to go back and assign correct answers or assign points um, sometimes it's just it, you can make mistakes i think it's just easier and uh you know, less opportunities <laughs> to make mistakes if you make it a quiz right away. You can assign points and assign answers as you go with each question. All right, great. So this is wonderful. This is a recent, somewhat recent update, but all, qu all questions are automatically required when you make your Google form um, now with a quiz. Because before I had to go in and make each question required. Now you don't have to worry about that. It's automatically required so students will be unable to submit if they haven't answered a question. If you want to check that, it's here under defaults. Form defaults and question defaults make questions required by default. So that's great. So let's get into creating questions in Google Forms. This is what you are probably seeing on your form. Number one here on the right, this cute little icon menu. This is add question. Here you change the question type and here's the menu that appears when you change the question type. There's short answer, there's paragraph, multiple choice, checkbox, drop down, file upload, and linear scale, multiple choice grid, checkbox grid, whole lot of things there. Um, number three, you make the question required. Thankfully, that's automatic now, so that's wonderful. For number four, this left icon is make a copy. So if you have a question already and you want to just make a small change to it, you can click this icon. It will copy the question. And this little trash can, of course, is to delete the question. For myself, I use multiple choice. I use, sometimes I use checkboxes and sometimes I use short answer. It's possible to use these other question types but the responses that you see are, can be a little messy. The first question that you should create on your Google form right now is, what is your name or what is your full name? It is a short answer question. Because like I said before, if you don't ask and require this question, then uh, you will have responses as, and you won't know whose responses they are. So every time I create a Google form, I make it a quiz. And my first question is, what is your name or what is your full name? So I'm going to do that now in my Google form. I'm going to questions. My first question is, what is your name? Oh, and it automatically changed to short answer. Okay, so maybe you see a problem with this. It says answer key one point. So that means that any answer is going to be wrong if it doesn't match the answer that I put <laughs> for what is your name. So we need to fix that. You need to click answer key to remove this point. So here is our picture. You'll click this down arrow after you click answer key and assign zero points and you'll click done. 
So I'll demonstrate that now. Click answer key. Click the down arrow to zero points and click done. Otherwise, the students will answer with their question. Uh, I'm sorry, answer with their name and then they'll get it wrong if you don't change the answer key and designated points to zero. And I've had it happen. <laughs> the students laugh, um, but I feel bad. <laughs> so it's just something to remember to do every time. Make your Google form a quiz, short answer question, what is your name? Click answer key, move the down arrow to zero, click done. So please do that now if you haven't yet. That's answer key and then designate the points to zero. I actually presented a training before um, for teachers at my school <laughs> and I forgot to do this and <laughs> they gave me a little bit of a hard time about it. So I don't, I don't forget anymore. <laughs> Alrighty, has everyone done that? You've created your question, what is your name? And assigned zero points to that question. Are we ready to continue? I think so. Alrighty. So as you probably have seen, you can use, uh, you can change the question type to multiple choice. Here's an example of a multiple choice question with two answers. And you can choose checkbox. If you change the question type to checkboxes, then there is no partial credit. With multiple choice, there can be more than one correct answer. If the student gets one correct, then they get the point. If you use check boxes, then the students must check each box in order to get the points. So it's a little more difficult this one. So go ahead and experiment with that. We can create a multiple choice question. Now's the time that you can create something that you can use in your class. Let's see. Tomorrow, I can say, do, did, or will. Here's a multiple choice question. And I can add a checkbox question. Choose all of the simple future. Choose all of the sentences with simple future. I will go shopping tomorrow. I go shopping every Sunday. He'll help you study. Yeah. Here's an example. With the checkboxes, though, remember that the students, if they only answer one, in this case, they will not get the points, the point or the points. Okay. So let's talk about selecting the correct answer or answers and designating the points. So you have to select the question. You can tell you've selected the question if it's highlighted blue on the left. And you have to click answer key like we did before. Then we can assign however many points you want to. You're gonna select the correct answer or answers just by clicking on them and they'll be highlighted green with a check mark. And you can add feedback here if you desire and click done. So I created two questions here. I'm going to click my answer key. I'm gonna keep it one point 
which is the automatic point designation for each new question. I'm going to select the correct answer as well, and I'm going to choose done. Here, I'm going to click answer key after I selected the question. I'm going to make this two points. And I'm going to select both of these answers. Here we go. This also might be a good time to change the title of your Google form if you haven't done it yet. I'm going to call this simple future warm up. Up Monday warm up. That's my title. And then it still says untitled form here in the top left. So if I click in that box, it will automatically fill with the title. So I hope that you have created maybe several questions, assigned some points, changed your title. Are there any questions so far? I hope you're enjoying making something for your classes. <laughs> so if we're ready, let's continue. You don't need to number them. You can if you'd like to. You can put the number in the question. I do that sometimes. Number one. Or maybe here we can say number one instead of what is your name? Number one, what do you, what will you do tomorrow? <laughs> number three, here we go. Number three, two, number two, choose all the sentences with the future. Yeah, so if you want to number them, you can put it there in the question. Is there a way to automatically number them? I'm not sure. Hmm, I'm not sure. I haven't seen that as a setting. I'm going to assume no, that there is not a way to automatically number them. Is it possible to import questions from a Word doc? I don't know the question for that or the answer to that either. You can try Googling, say, um, import questions from a Word doc to Google Form. There might be a way. You can always copy paste. Copy paste from the Word doc into the Google form. It would be great if you could import it. You do not have to toggle required. If you chose setting and you chose make this a quiz, then it will automatically require the question. You don't have to worry about it. Awesome. Any other questions so far? Feel free to experiment with these other features. Oh, here's import question. It looks like you have to import from other forms though. Oh, not from Google Docs or Google or, or Word. You can add titles and description. You can add pictures. You can add video. You can add different sections to separate maybe several pages of questions. Oh, sweet. There's a doc to form add on to install. Is that a, a Google extension, maybe? Awesome. Thank you for that. Yay. I just learned that if you toggle the setting, or required after you've created the question, that setting won't apply to the question you've already made. Yes, you can, you can unrequire a single question and the rest will be required. I think, I think that's what you mean, Elizabeth. Sorry, I meant <clears throat> I'd already created a question when I, when you introduced that amazing 
global setting and the settings pane. Yeah. And so I went in and tucked it and then you know, toggled it. But then uh -huh. when I went back to the quiz questions, I realized that the question I had already made, um, the, the setting had not been applied to it. All you would have to do is refresh. I did. And, and it still didn't work. It? Yeah. Okay. There's only one question. I just turned it on in the, in okay. the question itself. I, when I've done this know. before, I thought that I had created a question and then I create, made it a quiz and then I refreshed. But anyway, see, this is why <laughs> I recommend just when you first create the Google form, the first thing you do is make it a quiz. Um, just right off the bat, because it just prevents the little things like this from, from happening. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, so let's talk now about turning off submissions. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about other functions, functionality things. Um, if you want to turn off submissions, you have to select the responses tab and toggle this feature feature here, accepting responses, and turn it off. Um, in my class, I'm not going to be fast enough to turn them off to prevent students from submitting more than once. It's just not possible. Um, but I do use this feature to prevent students from answering uh, from answering the Google form before I'm ready, because my students. They're so familiar with my LMS that early in the day before class, if I have something there live, they will complete it before they even get to class. Um, so I turn off uh, accepting responses. I turn it off until I'm ready for them to, uh, to do it in class. Uh, and you can try to maybe if, if you want to cut them off at some point, you could turn it off again. So. Let's try that now. Here I am back with my Google form. I'm choosing responses. And then I'm toggling here, accepting responses. So toggle this. And now it is read, not accepting responses. So when students uh, open the link, they'll see this message. This form is no longer accepting responses. So that might be handy to you. Especially if you have um, students like mine that are very eager. <laughs> Any questions about toggling accepting responses on and off? Were you able to do that yourself? No, okay. Great. Let's talk now about how you can limit submissions. So if you're using Google Classroom, then I think you'll be able to do this. In the, in the settings, oh, we're not, we don't use the icon anymore. That's from a previous, from a previous uh, training. You want to you choose the settings tab in the top right corner. And you'll go down to limit to one response here. Limit to one response. But as you can see, it says respondents will be required to sign in to Google. So unfortunately, I'm not able to limit my limit submissions for my students uh, because they're using all sorts of emails when they come into my class. Uh, but if your students are all using Google or maybe you use Google Classroom, you can select limit to one response. So let's find that here in settings, responses, and you can choose limit to one response. Toggle that on. However, I think most of us are unable to use that feature. It would be nice, but Google demands that you use Google email addresses. <laughs> Any questions about limiting to one response? I think that's just something that's good to know that we can't use. <laughs> okay.
back to our presentation. Let's talk about editing mode versus preview mode. So when you open your Google form, when you have it open, you can click this little eye and click preview. And click preview, you will see what respondents will see. And you can complete your uh, Google form, which is probably ideal that you fill it out yourself first, just to make sure everything is, is working, everything is good. Um, but just know that your results will be collected in responses and will affect the data. So let's just try that out now. We are going up here to the right in this, uh, these little icons. We're clicking preview. I have to turn on responses. I have to turn on the re collecting responses. Now I can click preview. I'm going to answer my name. I'm going to answer my questions. I'm going to submit. Your response has been recorded. And now I can click view score. Oh, look, I got all three points. Three out of three. Amazing. Yay. So if I go back to my editing mode tab, I will now see the response. So when you click preview mode, it opens in a new tab and you can complete the Google form. When you go back to your editing mo mode tab, you can see the response that you just submitted. So go ahead and try that. You need to click preview here, complete your Google form, then return to the editing tab to see your response. I want to give you a minute to do that now. They don't need to use Gmail to use Google Forms. They don't need to use any email address whatsoever, which is great. But to limit them to one response, students do need a Gmail. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. But, you know, like I said, it's kind of, um, I think, I don't know, endearing or, you know, exciting. Students are excited to, to submit more than one response. Um, so might as well let them um, unless you explicitly maybe tell them only submit once, you know, if it's if it's really important to you that they that they don't submit more than once, you can tell them not to, maybe. For the pre-assessments, I really don't mind. They can do it as many times as they want. Any questions on preview mode versus editing mode? Can we continue? I do have a question. Yes. In the preview mode, when I did the test and you said it does skew the results, is there a mm -hmm. way for me to delete my test and then yes. it won't skew? I'm so glad you asked. That is the next thing we're going to do <laughs> is erase the responses. So here in the same page with responses you'll want to go to these three dots here the little menu with the three dots click it and then select delete all responses so i'm going to go here to my google form that i created go to the three dots here 
go down my menu and click delete all responses. Are you sure you want to delete all responses? Yes. They will be lost forever, but you need to be able to delete your response. So go ahead and do that now if you need to. I don't think there is a way to delete only one if you have a collection of responses. I just see delete all responses. I suppose if you wanted to, after exporting, you could delete one row of data, if that helps. Yes, if you don't want to delete all responses, maybe you want to do um, just reuse the form, uh, you can make a copy. So here I'm looking at my at my Google form. And at the top on the right are all these icons. Here's three dots again, but it's sort of the, um, the overall menu, not these three dots here. The three dots next to my icon, next to send. You can, collect, you can click make a copy. Just make sure that when you click make a copy, that you, that you then move the copy into the correct folder because it will populate either in the same folder or just in your Google Drive, unorganized. So click make a copy, and then after it's created, move it into the folder that you'll be able to find it in later, if that makes sense. It's a great question. Ooh, if you click individual, you'll see a little trash icon and you can delete individual responses. That's awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'm going to add that to my presentation. I'm gonna add that here for me to come back to later. <laughs> awesome. So, if you have several responses, you can click individual and delete an individual response. That's wonderful to know. Thank you. All right, we don't have a whole lot of time left. We definitely need to talk about how to share your Google form. So let's talk about that. So in the settings tab, you need to go to responses here. And then you need to toggle if there is a restriction. For me, with my school district, there's a restriction automatically that uh, requires respondents to have to be in the LAUSD uh, group. So they have to be signed in with a school email address. Um, so I have to untoggle that every time before I send a Google form. I'm not sure what it is for you. If you're using your personal um, email address, this shouldn't be a problem. But in case you're using your school email address and there is a, a restriction in your district, you might have to do this in settings, go to responses, toggle restrict to users in LAUSD to remove the, the restriction. And then you can click send in the top right. So. Let me do that now in my new tab. Here we go. I need to first go to settings. I need to go down to responses. I need to untoggle restrict to users in LAUSD. Then I can go up to the top and I can click send. And I click here this little chain link. I like to shorten the link because it's just prettier. I copy it and I have it copied. Now I can email students. I can put it on my LMS. I can put it in the Zoom chat, whatever you want to do. However, you can get this to students. I'm going to move along a little faster here and talk now with you about how to get this 
link to your students. After you click the link icon and click copy, how are you going to share this link? I share it on my LMS on Schoology or Canvas, you know, Google Classroom, whatever LMS you use. You can create a QR code and you can project it on in the classroom if you want all your students to access from the classroom and you don't use your LMS regularly. You can send it out through Remind or WhatsApp or Class Dojo, whatever it is, if you have a communications app with your students. And of course, you can email it. If I want, if I make, um, if I make a quiz in forms, but then wanted to use it as an in class quiz, do you know if it prints out easily enough to use in a class when teaching a hybrid class? I may sometimes give the quiz online, sometimes give it in person. That's a great Great question. Let's experiment. Um, Lois, did you, did you, uh, did I repeat what you needed me to repeat? I just didn't see where you got that um, um, send or create the link and make you. Okay. I, I just didn't see how you got to there. Okay. Did you, okay, great, great. So one more time. Um, after I changed my settings to remove this restriction, I go up to the top to this sort of icon menu and I clicked send the big purple send button. From here, I can click. Perfect, it. perfect. Uh -huh. Thank you. Of course, of course. So now let's experiment and see if we can print this. I see an option from these three dots for print. I don't know how it looks though. Hmm, not bad. You can. This is great. Good for me to know too that you can print it. It is going to say like required here, but that's fine. It is required. <laughs> okay, great. Awesome. I'm going to make a note of that too. Print for in person quizzes. Thank you for that. Alrighty. Can people open the link in Zoom if you add it in the chat? Yes, you did it earlier. <laughs> or we did it earlier at the beginning of this training. You can share the link in the Zoom chat, which is great. Any other awesome questions? Could you demo how to make a QR code? I could, I can, I can pretty fast. I Google make QR code. The first one is a QR code generator. I'm going to grab my link again one more time. Sorry, I need to slow down. I'm so used to just going fast. I'm going to copy the link and I'm going to go back to the QR code generator. And it's automatically, uh, it's got all these other selections, but I just ignore that. It says enter your website. So I copy it and then you can download the JPEG of the QR code. Once you've downloaded the JPEG, you can project it onto the screen. So I've done this sometimes um, just to get students to go to a link quickly on their phones. This is a great way to do it. Yeah, not bad, not too bad. Um, there's a question I noticed in your Schoology course that you had Google Forms as links in your materials. Do you prefer that to embedding it into a material page? I do because I used to embed it and for some students phones, it wasn't working. Um, so most students use their phones. And so just just to be sure I, I, I use the link. Can you do a screen cap and paste into a slide as well? I can. I can do that right now. Um, let, me, let me do a <laughs> quick picture here. All righty, let's add that to my presentation as well. 
QR code. And I will add some instructions later for this. All right. Great. Right. Let's see how we're we doing on time. We have 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes. All right. I think that you understand viewing the assessments via responses, but we'll just talk about it quickly. Um, you toggle to responses and you can see student responses, excuse me, sorry, you can see responses in three different ways, summary, by question, or by individual, which Elizabeth helped us uh, with that. You can actually delete individual responses from this uh, menu, which is awesome. I like summary because you can see right away the average, the median, the range, and this was a small class because this was, I think, um, COVID times, but I want to see who this student is. If you have any zeros or ones, you can find them much more easily from responses page, but also from the export as well. It also shows frequently missed questions, which can be very helpful. If you don't want to review all the answers with the students, you can, uh, the Google form displays for you the most fre frequently missed questions. So you can go over those questions in class after students have submitted. Like we saw before, multiple choice and checkbox questions display responses in a bar graph, which is pretty nice. Um, and as I sort of indicated at the beginning of class, this is great for our understanding as teachers, but you can also use this in your class and have students engage with the data from their own responses. You can ask the students to draw conclusions. You can ask them to make reflections after seeing what um, the, the responses are as a whole for their class. Um, other functions of Google Forms include add an image or video, add a section, reordering questions or sections, undoing an action, which is just this little arrow, making a copy that we, we talked about that. You can also shuffle question order or shuffle word, uh, answer order. Um, I don't use those features and I don't remember how to do it, but that's something you can Google if that's something you're interested in. So let's talk with the last few minutes of the presentation about how to export the Google Sheet of responses so you can maybe more easily see that information, store it for later. On that responses tab, you're going to click this icon, view responses in sheets. Then you can rename it. It will be the same name that you have given your Google form with responses in parentheses and then you can click create and this will populate in probably just in your google drive so after you create the google sheet remember to use that little folder icon and move it into the correct folder where you want it to be um, so let's try that oh first i need to have some responses though Oh, good, I have one. All right, I'm going to export this, create the spreadsheet. I'm not going to change the name. That name's fine. I'm going to create it. And now, automatically, I have a spreadsheet with the timestamp, the score, answers, and our questions, which is great. Now let's see if I click on this icon, where did this Google Sheet populate? And it populated in the same folder that I had my Google form. That's good to know. You can always move it if you want to move it elsewhere. Okay, so hopefully this really helps you. You can use Google Forms um, to better collect your student data students can really benefit from it it's a great tool for them and a great tool for you 
Um, we've explored how to create a Google form, um, sort of my best practices for implementing it in your classroom, and how to collect the Google Sheet data. So I think that's just about it. Was there anything, any other last questions? We created a Google Sheet. It opened automatically in Google Drive. How do we see who scored what without showing all students the names when displaying the summary? Um, if you display with summary, then the only question where they'll see their names is what is your name? They won't know who has answered what. Um, do you ever create quizzes with images? I do, you can. You can insert image with either adding an image here or you can actually use an image um, within the question, which can be fun if you like to do that. Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. I can, let me send you this link. All right, so. I had a I had a couple cute little gifts, which we could say. Now what? Now what do you do? Now you have fun. Take this tool. Enjoy it. Use it. And thank you for coming. Happy Friday. I'm going to give you this link here now. Thank you for coming. 